that NASA had funded us an advanced technology development program to explore, develop some of the new, develop some of the new technologies that we were going to thought we were going to need. If you just fly past a planet, you will gain or lose energy depending on which way you pass. So I knew it would work. Everybody knew it would work. After Voyager 1 was launched 45 years ago, it defied all logical expectations and kept exploring uncharted territories it wasn't meant to reach, doing all of this after outliving its lifespan. This space probe by NASA keeps sending data to Earth with a far outdated technology that's no better than a vintage cassette player. Now, Voyager 1 has just turned back, sending a stunning discovery that unsettles the scientific community. What could this finding be? Why are scientists so shocked? Join us as we unravel the terrifying discovery Voyager 1 made after turning back. Shocking discovery of Voyager 1. That terrified scientists. Voyager 1 made an intriguing discovery and sent back terrifying data after it crossed the heliosphere. The journey to the heliosphere began taking shape as far back as 1965, when a highly intellectual scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory Gary Flandro was tasked with the best path for a space probe to reach the giant planets of our solar system like Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, and Uranus. Before Gary began working on this mission in 1965, the Soviet Union had just launched its first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, eight years earlier. Without further ado, Gary Flandro set out to work with a pencil and a precision tool that was the favorite of 20th century engineers. Not too long into his calculations, he stumbled upon a stunning discovery. He discovered that between the late 1970s and early 1980s, all four gas giants of the solar system, Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, and Uranus, would align in a cosmic dance, forming a celestial necklace with Earth as if strung together by pearls. This alignment only happens once every 176 years, and any spacecraft that passes at that time would get an immense speed boost from the gravitational pull of each of these giant planets, and it would seem as if the spacecraft was tugged along by an unseen cord that snapped at the last minute, causing it to be thrust forward with so much force. Being a sharp thinker, Gary quickly calculated that a space trip from Earth to Neptune, which would usually take 30 years, can now be done in just 12 years because of the gravitational pull from this cosmic alignment. Since this opportunity only comes once every 176 years, there was no time to waste as NASA quickly launched the identical Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 space probes within 15 days of each other around the summer of 1977. Originally intended to last only four years, these twin space probes have gone on to surpass their expected lifespan 45 years later as they make insightful discoveries and send them back to Earth. Voyager 1 is currently the farthest space probe from the Earth as it has outlasted and traveled longer than any spacecraft, even venturing into interstellar space. They've flown by Jupiter and Saturn and captured them in a photo sent back to NASA, unveiling a rich and dynamic world that has been hidden from us all this while. Discovering ice fields and active volcanoes on these two giant planets, the Voyager probes have shaped our understanding of these distant planets. In 1986, the Voyager 2 probe broke a record as the first space probe to travel close to Uranus and breezed past Neptune three years later, currently located around 14 billion miles from the Earth as the farthest space object from home. Voyager 1 has been unrelenting in making profound discoveries about solar and interstellar space as it promptly takes photos and sends interesting data back home. Having the same or lesser size as a Volkswagen Beetle, the twin space probes have continued to break expected barriers and expand the frontiers of our cosmic knowledge. Starting on its journey with a gravity assist from Venus, which is the first of its kind for any spacecraft, both space probes made their way to the second nearest planet, Mercury making them the first probes to ever attempt to use the gravity of planets as a launching aid in their space travels. This pioneering feat didn't come without its fair share of errors, as scientists recorded margins of errors measuring tens of minutes in several attempts to get it right. This calculation error resulted in the first leg of Voyager 1's visit to Jupiter, 
landing in a distance ten times farther from the Earth than Mercury, making the probes wade through terrible asteroid belts that have a lot of speculations and debate behind them. The strong opinions behind these asteroid belts came because Pioneer 10 and 11 first created a path through these thick asteroids in the 1970s and came out without a scratch. The success of both Pioneer space probes made it possible for Voyager 1 to safely go through the dense asteroid belts. Another challenge Voyager 1 faced was that its memory only contained 69 kilobytes which was equal to a mere fraction of a smartphone's capacity. To manage the daily nuances and complexities they'll face in their voyage, both space probes had to depend on onboard intelligence. All the instruments in the space probe were stored on eight-track recorders before getting transported back to NASA by a paltry 23-watt transmitter, which had just as much power as a refrigerator's light bulb. Loaded with 12-dish wide antennas, both probes used radio communication as they journeyed at the speed of light through space, receiving and transmitting data to Earth. Due to the great distance they had from Earth, which widened by three or four light seconds daily, the signals from the probes couldn't stay constantly connected to its base in NASA. Voyager 2's signals took as long as 18 hours to send data to Earth which was made worse by the increasing interference from Earth's noise coming from mobile phones, televisions, and radios. These interferences ensured that the faint signals from the space probe had difficulty reaching Earth. Despite these challenges, Voyager 1 has continued to surprise scientists back home by exploring and sending data, and also stretching itself way beyond its technological lifespan and capability. One of the things Voyager 1 encountered in its travels was the majestic Oort Cloud, which is a collection of rocket-like comets held together by the sun's gravitational pull and stretching out towards the closest star. John Oort, an astronomer, submitted a theory that certain comets originate from faraway spherical shells of icy cosmic bodies that surround the solar system. He proposed this theory and succeeded in naming a huge swarm of icy bodies the Oort Cloud in 1950. As Voyager 1 passed through the Oort cloud into interstellar space, it entered the arena where the solar wind is located, an accessible place where the border between interstellar space and our solar system. This border is popularly referred to as the heliopause. The heliopause is the beginning of unexplored regions in the interstellar space. Initial calculations made for the distance it takes Voyager 1 to reach the heliopause weren't consistent. Assuming the distance was 50 astronomical units, then it means the space probe's funding would have to be increased. As Voyager 1 left the heliopause, no signs of a journey into interstellar space were noticed. Scientists were left wondering because one of the factors of moving into interstellar space was the sharp increase in high-energy particles from star explosions and galactic cosmic rays. However, one reason it could be so is that most low-energetic rays are deflected by the powerful magnetic shield created by the heliosphere since they protect our solar system from major external threats. As the space probe moved even further into interstellar space, scientists kept a good eye on any detected changes in the dominant magnetic field. Scientists thought that the interstellar medium made up of ionized gases that were affected by close stars would have a different magnetic field as opposed to the heliosphere. Still, both twin probes reported nothing of such unusual magnetic reading, leaving scientists even more bewildered. Finally, on August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause and sent terrifying data back to Earth. Scientists noted that there was a surge in plasma density, but there was still no shift in the direction of the magnetic fields. This wasn't supposed to happen, because, on paper, scientists already determined that there will always be a change in magnetic field direction when a space probe moves from where the sun's magnetic field is greater to interstellar space that's governed by stars. Scientists confused by magnetic fields Still having a puzzled look on their faces, NASA scientists watched as Voyager 2 traveled down to the interstellar seashore until it finally made its way to the heliopause at 120 astronomical units. 
This was the same distance Voyager 1 used to reach the heliosphere, the border between the solar and interstellar space, six years before now. As Voyager 2 approached the heliosphere, scientists hoped to confirm that there was indeed a shift in magnetic fields and that maybe Voyager 1's measurement and readings had become faulty. To their shock, Voyager 2 did not also record any change in the magnetic field as it was laid down in scientific textbooks and models. This discovery terrified scientists because it meant that their models and theories could have been wrong all this while. Another prediction made by scientists that fell flat on its face was that the heliosphere, being influenced by the 11-year cycle of the sun, should have retreated and flowed like the solar wind. Rather, neither the solar wind nor the heliosphere drew back, as the solar wind was at its peak strength when Voyager 2 showed up at the scene. Scientists couldn't wrap their heads around this phenomenon, so they suggested that maybe the heliopause should have been more distant than 120 astronomical units. With each step this space probe takes into the interstellar medium, the data sent back reveals little changes in the heliopause as influenced by the heliosphere's activities. When looked at from wider scales, the magnetic fields show insignificant variation. This development makes the scientific community wonder if Voyager 1 would soon leave these regions and break into true interstellar space where there would be a change in magnetic fields. Either that or their present understanding of its simulation is completely wrong. Within NASA, some scientists think that Voyager 1 is still in the heliosphere, while the majority insist that the probes are already in interstellar space because of the increased plasma density and galactic cosmic rays. Voyager 1's current state. Lots of instruments in Voyager 1 have become obsolete because it has exceeded its intended lifespan. Some examples of these obsolete technologies in the space probe are VCRs, answering machines, and pennies. Powered by outdated technology from 50 years ago since its designers didn't have the luxury of writing complex programming codes, the space probe has remained incredibly useful in the discovery of solar and interstellar systems. Voyager 2 currently has five active instruments, while Voyager 1 only has four operational instruments. These instruments use the power obtained from the conversion of heat to plutonium's radioactive decay. Then they turn this energy into electric power. Nevertheless, as the power of Voyager 1 diminishes by 4 watts every year, NASA has had to switch to triage mode and ensure the engineers shut off the heater that detects cosmic rays so power can be conserved. This heater is an important tool for determining the exit and entry of the heliosphere. The remaining instruments are still functioning even in extremely unhealthy conditions that stretch beyond the probe's tested limits. Scientists predict that the plasma science instruments and the magnetometer will be the last instruments to go down since they're latched into the space probe's main body and kept warm by the internal computer's heat. Other instruments wouldn't be so lucky as they're mounted outside on the 43-long fiberglass boom. If the power continues as expected, scientists hope to prolong Voyager 1's mission to 2030 and they've made projections that in 16,700 years, Voyager 1 will breeze past the Proxima Centauri star that's closest to the Earth. And Voyager 2 will do the same 3,600 years later. Long after the Sun and Heliosphere are gone, both space probes will continue to explore space. Voyager 1 has the potential to outlast the Earth and might end up delivering a final message long after humans are extinct and the radio signals are gone. We just found another discovery other than Voyager 1, and it's powered by the James Webb Space Telescope as it launches its brand new JWST Special Edition phone cases. Get yours by clicking the link on the screen or following the link in the description. Outro. Thanks for watching to the end to find out the terrifying discovery Voyager 1 made. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting video content.